Hey guys, we're up here in Valencia and we're with Gary and his wife Leah. And they're gonna show us their house and then me and Gary are gonna sit down and have a discussion. So, and it's how many bedrooms in this one? We got uh, two bedrooms up here in the main house and then we got a little guest house just over there, we'll show it to you that, uh, you know, we have uh, people sleeping there. It's got a sink and a little outside bathroom. So good, good for guests. Yeah. Okay, follow Leia. All right, so we paid 20,000 per month pesos. pesos. I'm trying to get it. So our house is not very clean right now, but here's our kitchen. Yep. So there's our cooking stuff. It's not fully furnished, it's only furnished. When we get here, it's only few. It, it only comes with table and couch in the rest of the furniture, we bought it. So we got TV right there. That's my mom, my kids. <laughs> All right, so. Gracie, be careful. <laughs> Okay, so it only has one bathroom, and this is our oh, this is our uh, bedroom, master bedroom. Not too big, not too small, just a good size for us. And here's our CR. It's not, it's quite small. Yeah, yeah, it's only small bathroom. So. And then here's the second room. This is actually Gary's office in the daytime, but my my first daughter sleep here in the night. So my daughter's bedroom slash Gary's office in the daytime. So okay, yeah, that's pretty much it. And also Gary mentioned we have a guest house, a guest room for for my mom. My mom used to sleep. I'll, I'll just take my daughter. <laughs> You might fall. This is my favorite part, the patio. When I, uh, my visitor come here, we usually hang out here. It's cool. Gary and Leah rent this house and property for 20,000 pesos a month. I hope you take a moment to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and leave me a comment about this house and also about the conversation Gary and I have. This is a Philippine bathroom. Yeah. I only use this one. But at least uh, we got something. Very, very, very short <laughs> toilet. Look at that. I don't think you could sit in that. <laughs> That's too small, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. This is a great room for the guest. Yes. It also comes with a refrigerator and kitchen. Has own kitchen. And a small bed, bamboo bed for Philippine. <laughs> Can I do your interview? How, how long have you been here now? For almost two years. Uh -huh. Almost two years. Yeah, almost two years? Yep. And the landlord is, is a Filipino or foreigner? Or? Yeah, he's Filipino. Actually, the owner of this house lives next door. Well, he owns the house next door. Oh, yeah, But big, he's never here. So he's always in, he's got another place in Manila yeah. or something. Yeah. So. So, so, so his brother, who uh, lives down the street, he collects the rent each month. and. No hassle, they're really easy. I thought I had a nice place at 23,000 a month. This is gorgeous place, mm. beautiful place for 20. 20,000, yeah, and no no contract. I just pay cash each month. 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 No, no hassle, and he's always said to me, yeah, you stay as long as you want. No, How old are your children? Gracie is three. Gracie's three. And Bless is five. Five. Bless is five. Hey, everybody, I'm here with my friend Gary. And Hello. he has a YouTube channel called American Christian in the Philippines. Correct. And uh, I want you guys to meet him. And why don't you tell us a little bit about your channel, Gary? Okay, well, American Christian. I'm, I am American. Now, you're going to get a lot of people saying, you don't sound American. Because <laughs> I get that all the time. You sound a little British. I am. Okay, so the accent's from England. Grew up in England and uh, moved to uh, U.S. in my mid-20s. Um, but spent most of my adult life there and had two children, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm an American citizen, so that, that's where my heart is. I consider myself American. We have a little common. I was born in Bath, England, mm. and okay. yeah. my parents kidnapped me when I was 10 months old <laughs> to bring me to the U.S. In, in 1955. So, you know, I got my citizenship and spent my whole life in the U.S., mm. but uh, I don't consider myself British. But I have a British passport along with my you U.S. Did? passport. I have two okay. passports. Yeah, I kept my British passport, actually. Yeah. 
so yeah, so American and Christian, obviously, because I'm a Christian and my channel has a lot of Christian content. Uh, and in, in, in the Philippines, because I do stuff about the Philippines too, not as much, most of it's Christian content, but I throw in a few little house tours here and there, a few interviews mix with Philippines, mix it up a little bit, yeah. yeah. That's good. Yeah, so Is, in your in Christian uh, following, you have a Bible study group? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've seen it. I think it's at Ground Zero once in a while. Every every Wednesday at Ground Zero, we meet at 9 o'clock. And, you know, this is just one of these great stories from, from started from the channel, which has been it's about one year old now, the channel. And uh, it was shortly after I, I did my first couple of videos, where I kind of told my story, a little bit about my life, and somebody contacted me because they could relate to what I'd been through. And um, we ended up meeting. We talked about maybe starting a Bible group. And uh, we just started, a couple of us, and uh, here we are a year later, having like 35 plus people. It was crowded. The, <laughs> yeah. the one day we went in there, and you know, I saw you at the table, and there's a lot of people. Yeah. I didn't interrupt you. Um, and then somebody told me that you have that Bible study. Do you find it hard to be a Christian in the Philippines? No. No. No, I find it. Well, you know, one thing that's important with, with, you know, with your faith, I think, is having fellowship. It's really important to have fellow beliefs that you can talk to, um, can hold you accountable for what you're doing in your life. And uh, I've really found that. There's some really great people out here in Dumaguete, a lot of good foreigners. Is it, you know, the foreigners, when they come here, uh, if, they have a, if they have a strong Christian belief, but they're here alone, you know, I, I believe your first couple of weeks here uh, in the Philippines alone, if you don't have a girlfriend, mm. is, it's very lonely. Cause you can go to the regular tourist spots, but you really don't know anybody. Have you met a lot of guys who uh, are thankful they found you to have fellowship with in the Christian? Uh, yes. 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 Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. And, and some of them, I've heard some people say that Wednesdays is the highlight of the week. Well, that's great. <laughs> we really look yeah. forward to it. And we have this gathering. We all meet. We socialize. And we've all become good friends as well. So it's not just... It's not just Wednesday Wednesdays meeting. now, we, we have other events. So stuff. these people, they become your good friends. Yes. And I, I tell people when you come to the Philippines, you're going to make friends. But at first, they're just acquaintances. You have to decide who are your good friends. And I guess through the Bible study, uh, mm -hmm. you have met some very good friends. I have. And now now you're just going to call them lifelong friends. Yes. As long as you're here in the yes. Philippines. That's, oh, that's sure. really great. Sure. Now, I've lived in quite a few different places in the Philippines. And uh, on the... Dumaguete is, for me, the best group of expats that I've come across. And I've, maybe I've lived, because I've lived in the big cities before, I've lived in Manila, I've lived in Cebu, and, uh, and I was kind of a different person back then, so the people I were, uh, was mixing with then and meeting weren't particularly Winter. Christian type people, so I didn't make many good friends. It was hard to make friends mm -hmm. before I came to Dumaguete. It's more of a small town feel to it, Dumaguete. It and there are a lot of foreigners here, but they seem to congregate. Um, you're up here in Valencia, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I, I don't know if you have foreign neighbors, but you don't run yeah. into them as often as you do at Ground Zero or down down on the boulevard. You see much, many, many more foreigners there. Oh, for sure. And by the yeah, a lot of my neighbors are foreigners. <laughs> They're foreigners. I mean, foreigners over there, next door, up the street. Street, I've got another famous logger. Um, oh. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That lives there, but I want their names. Paul Old Dog lives down okay. the road here. <laughs> I wasn't going to say, uh, but. I have a map to his house. Uh, send me a dollar and I'll send it to you. <laughs> I'm but sure he'd be very grateful. <laughs> <laughs> so, you have a lovely family. We got mm. to meet meet your wife. Yes. Um, how long have you been? You just got married. Well, yes, I, I, I okay. know. I did get officially married with the ceremony and everything where we did our vows but legally we were married three years ago oh okay that's i didn't know that <laughs> well, yeah, you know, because right. because you know 2020 the uh, pandemic yeah. started and everything and uh, uh my my baby my youngest one uh gracie is three now she she was born right before the pandemic and we were not married at the time and uh you know as i was beginning to grow in my faith because i was Fairly a new, nickel real Christian, and still messing up, making mistakes, and we both were feeling kind of guilty that we're not married, and you know, so we wanted to correct that as soon as possible. So we actually got married online. 
In that, it was at that Utah wedding yes. thing? Oh, yes. okay. Through the uh, Utah courts, mm -hmm. you know, the, there's a, a, a web wed. I think yeah, the so. web wed. We saw that. You've seen that? Yeah. yeah. So we did the marriage online because we wanted to at least, you know, be legally married. Be legally married. But I always promised her, I said, when the pandemic's over and when we can afford it, I'm going to give you your day. We're and gonna you have it. it to her. And we finally got it down uh, a month ago now. Gary's a man of his word. And, 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 and if you don't believe me, you can watch my wife's channel because <laughs> she's posted our wedding videos and, and, and her, our wedding vows, yeah. of which I, I recommend you watch that. She, my wife, she wrote her own vows and even shocked me. I thought she did incredible. Okay. I've never had vows like it. I was like, wow. What is uh, Philippine family life with Leia? Oh, I'm sorry. Philippine family life with Leia. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And she, she has the good channel. I yeah. don't know. <laughs> Down in the description box below, I'll have a link to both their mm. channels. Uh, they're both a little bit different, but it's a family affair. Mm. You know, you're a couple. Yeah. So you found your faith here in the Philippines. I did. And well, can I tell you the story? Yeah. I, and again, I don't want to keep no. you on here too, too long, but I, this is a very quick summary. And, and if anybody's interested, I actually tell my story in, in detail on my channel so you can check it out. But uh, I was an atheist for 40 years, oh. and it was uh, so 20 years ago or so, uh, and I won't give you the whole story here of how I became a Christian, but I did give my, um, I'm going to say my brain to Jesus at the mm -hmm. time, because I did a lot of investigation and, uh, you know, study, and I came to the conclusion, wow, this really seems to be true. But I don't think I ever gave my heart no, to Jesus. Heart, yeah. So after I kind of so became a Christian as such, it wasn't long after that, my life started falling apart. Uh, I fell away from Christianity and uh, became kind of a not a good person. Um, I became a heavy drinker, uh, got divorced from my first marriage. I started um, having many girlfriends. Uh, and then I think I ended up coming to Asia to escape the life that I was in. Sort of reinvent time. yourself or reboot? Yeah, I had an opportunity, business opportunity. Yeah. And I'm like, ah, I'll, I'll take that. And, came over, actually it was in China, mm -hmm. I started. So I spent my first two years in China. And then from China, I discovered the Philippines. And my first trip to the Philippines uh, was interesting. <laughs> I discovered how um, there's such beautiful women here. Mm -hmm. And uh, honestly, I, I, I kind of got addicted to That's dating. And that just led me on a destructive path of mm -hmm. drinking, partying, womanizing, and uh, until about, well, actually, almost five years ago now. Well, I just, I know I was waking up every morning. I didn't like who I was looking at. I didn't like what I'd become. My life was just a mess. And I, I go on my knees. I prayed. And I asked Jesus, I said, you know, I, I'm ready. I want to submit to you. I want to get on my knees. I want to give my heart to you now. I want to give all of me, to you, good or bad, whatever you've got in store for me, I You're accept. ready for it. I'm ready for it. And I didn't know what to expect. Uh, and seriously, Mike, from that moment, my life changed so dramatically and so quickly, it, to me, it's a miracle. Mm -hmm. Everything I prayed for and wished for started to come true. Started to come true. And, yeah. You Whereas found the right girl for you. Everything. You found the family for everything. you. Everything. Yeah. yeah. Got my, my wife. I mean, what a blessing. You know, she, she, she's just uh, perfect for me. We've got two beautiful children. Uh, life is great. And uh, I, I couldn't be happier right now. So since you found, you gave your heart. Mm. To Jesus and, and yes. to your religion and yes. your beliefs. Have you found that inner peace that uh, people talk about? Yes, yes, I have. Uh, I've got the, you know, the, there's two inner pieces. I've got the spiritual inner peace, for sure, because I'm comfortable now. I believe I, I, I have the truth, uh, you know, and, and I'm at extreme peace with that. But I also have the, the peace of where I'm living, you know. I think I found the, the perfect place for our family. Uh, I love I love Dumaguete and up here in Valencia where I live. It's it's, it's just great, mm -hmm. and uh, you know I couldn't I know everything is just great. I got no complaints. No, don't get me wrong. I'm not I'm not jumping around every day. Oh, hee hee, happy. I, I get days where they're not yeah, so good. Bad days. But yeah. generally, uh, life is as good as it could be. So now that you're in Valencia mm -hmm. and Dumaguete with the family. Are you, are you retired now, or are you still working online or something? No, I'm still working. Uh, I'm actually eligible for Social Security next year. Next year? Oh, there you go. Now, whether I start, I probably will, mm -hmm. but not sure. But right now, I'm still working my business in China. Oh, okay. Although I'm only doing uh, a fraction of what I used to. The pandemic kind of 
kill my business, but uh, I still got a little bit going on and I make enough to, to is survive. That, is that an online, everything's online there? Some... Yeah, we uh, manufacture actually sports apparel and uh, have it shipped to US. Oh, okay. So, so up here in Valencia, a lot of people would ask, how's the internet? Is this an issue for you up here? You know, it, it, it's got better, but it was a huge issue. You know, the problem up here is with the internet is, is they, they, they run these cables back and forth down the street. Not, not the, like we, we got a PLGT box across yeah. the street here, but of course there's no slots available. So when they come out to hook up the, uh, the Wi-Fi, they have to search for a box. And of course they end up, they always do the same thing. They can't, I can't find one, can't find one. How about if I give you a little tip, will you find one? Yes, sir. No, or somebody else. <laughs> of course, that's a thousand meters down the street is my cable. And you lose so, the signal through the lose, long cable. You know, it was doing okay at first, but you know when we had that typhoon and everything, was that a year and a half ago? Oh, Odetta, the one, yeah, the bad one that came out super Yeah, tight. yeah, and yeah. It, was, it was, you know, the trees were down here. Yeah. My cable got damaged, and of course, rather than replace the whole cable, they come and they cut and they splice it together. So you've got all these connectors. So and I had a, every month I was losing the connection. Had the red light on my modem and oh, it was terrible. But now, now it seems to be getting better. It's, it's do you yeah. see an improvement with the service? You know, as time's going on here, the infrastructure. Do you think they're trying to improve the internet up here, or is this too far away from the population base? I'd like to believe they're trying to improve. <laughs> so we're going to go think, with. I they're think trying a, I think there's a belief. That's, that's a hope. That's a hope. Where we live, we're down. We're down the hill. Yeah, we're yeah. close to Dumaguete. Uh, we have great internet uh i think some mm -hmm. people don't but for me it's it's plenty in the future do you see yourself leaving the dumaguete area mm -hmm. or is this your permanent home now okay that's gonna be this is a decision we're struggling with i want it to be my permanent home but i'm also struggling uh with the fact that i would and right now I've, I've got my wife who's got a philippine passport my stepchild who's a philippine passport and then gracie and me, American passports. Uh, this makes traveling not so easy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, plus, there's other things. You know, I'm eligible for Social Security, as I said, next year. And uh, there's benefits my wife can get from that, too, especially if something happens to me. Yeah, it goes back to the yeah, 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 yeah. So um, we struggle. Do we, do we try and get a citizenship and then come back here and settle yeah. down? Yeah. That's... Or do we just take our chance and that's stay right. here? Uh, yes. Through the YouTube. Have you made friends through YouTube? Have, have, have you made good acquaintances, yes. not just through your, your Bible study and, and your yeah. Christian faith, yeah. but through yeah. YouTube? You, you, you probably know this. I mean, um, people will email you. They say, I've seen you. I really uh, like what you're talking about, whatever. And, you know, hey, I'm going to be in town and not to meet you for coffee or something. Oh, yeah. You must get that. Those, those are our great moments. Yeah. Here's somebody. I can't believe anybody watched yeah, Me too. <laughs> you know, I'm an old man. I'm a chubby old man, and I got Janet, and I, I'm always amazed when somebody watches us, and I'm blessed that they do. Yeah. But when somebody says, I'll be in Dumaguete tomorrow, have lunch with me, or have coffee mm. with me, or when we walk through a mall in Cebu, mm. Oh, mm. out of nowhere, Janet, <laughs> bye. Yeah. It's so, it's so yeah. cool, and yeah. you know, you don't know that feeling, and these are friends you've made uh, that you would never have met right. without the YouTube, and there's... YouTubers in town that I would never have met without out the YouTube. Same, same right. with you. Well, Gary, uh, is there anything you want to share with the audience uh, about your channel or your life, or for them if they're coming here, what to expect? Yeah, well, I just, uh, I'm like anyone that watches my channel. I just appreciate it. I'm, I'm humbled, and when, when, like I said, when people come up to you and they, they tell you I, I watch your channel, I'm, I, I, I feel I'm humbled by it. I think it's. Uh, it's it's really amazing and I'm so so thankful, you know. And uh, so my channel is uh, not for everyone, uh, you know. But if you're someone that's either a Christian or you're seeking, I think you'll find a lot of good content, especially more so for people that are seeking, because I try to direct it towards people that have had experiences in life like I, I have. And there's a lot of them, people that come out to the Philippines and they get stuck going to the bars, you know. Mm -hmm. you know older They're men sort of like on the border, they could go one way or the other. Maybe yeah, yeah, or, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Um, it's a yeah. loneliness thing coming here by yourself to the yes. Philippines. Yes. If you don't already have a partner and uh, reach out. Mm. If you're here in Dumaguete and you want to reach out to somebody, uh, I'm sure Gary 
you know, get, leave him a message on one of his videos or leave him a message on, uh, you leave your email? Yeah, my on email's the, uh, on my uh, In the description, description yeah, in the about sure. column. Leave him, leave him a message if you're in town and would like to meet him. Yeah, and, and if you come into town, come down to Ground Zero on a Wednesday at 9 o'clock and join in our, our, our little Christian Bible group if, if, you, if you desire. Wednesday, 9 a.m., Ground Zero. Mm. Just bring yourself. You don't need to bring <laughs> nothing else. And say hi to Gary. You can, you won't miss Gary. He, he's a standout guy. He's tall. He's handsome. In a good way, I he's hope. Got the head. Yeah, no, he's in a good way. He, he stands out. Well, thank you for having us here at your home. Oh, thank you. And thanks for being on the channel. Thanks very and much. We wish you the best of luck.